Hi guys, back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the SIP protocol that is session initiation protocol. So before that we discussed about the SC23 and the MGCP protocol. Uh, I showed you the configuration on uh, CUCM like uh, how we can add the MGCP gateway, how we can add then SC23 gateway. And I showed you all the configuration commands on the gateway as well. So today I will be discussing about the session initiation protocol. So SIP, as you as we know that SIP is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. So it doesn't have it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the master-slave relationship, just like in the MDCP gateway. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Uh, like in MDCP, your master was CUCM and your slave was gateway. So this is not the case with uh, SIP protocol. It's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. If anything goes down, then it, like if CUC, if it if it just disconnect the connection, like there is, uh, uh, like we can say that if there is no connection between the CUCM and the gateway, but still everything will work because we configure everything on the gateway as well, so that if it lose the connection with the CUCM, it will work. So SIP is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And in these peers, we, we can call these peers as a user agents. And we can configure this user agent in two roles, that is user agent client and the user agent server. User agent client initiates the client request. User agent server receives and processes the request and returns a response. This SIP endpoint can function as USC plus US and there is a client server model between the phones and the SIP server. So let's discuss about this UAC and UAS. Let's suppose you have two phones like this one. This is your phone A and this is your phone B. If this phone A is initiating a request and it is sending one message that is an invite message in SIP. And if this A is sending a request to phone B, that means your A can act as a user agent client and your phone B can act as a user agent server. That means whoever is initiating the request, he will be acting as a user agent client. Like in this case, you can see user agent client initiates client request. It initiates the request. That's why this phone A is a user agent client. What user agent server will do? User agent server will receive the request and process it and it will return a response. So if there is one message which is going from A to phone B, that is an invite message. We will discuss about this, the basic call flow for the SIP as well. So it is sending an invite from phone A to phone B, then it should send a response from phone B to phone A. This is a request and it should the phone B should send a response. So mainly the response of invite is 100 train so that phone A should know that my invite message received by the phone B. So he doesn't need to send an, another invite message to phone B just because uh, phone A receives the response from phone B that is 100 train. So let's discuss about the details which we will discuss. So SIP, basic SIP protocol is used for creating, modifying and terminating the sessions with one or more participants. So we can have two participants like this one. We can have two, we can have three participants, we can have four, we can have five participants in one call as well. So it is used for creating, modifying if you want to like if you are create if you are just sending first request that is for creating if you want to mod modify anything in between like the codec or any other thing then you can modify as well if you want to terminate the session you can terminate it just by sending a buy message it will terminate the session as well with one or more participants and these sessions could include multimedia conferencing internet telephony calls and the multimedia distributions as well and this invitation is to create session and negotiate capabilities. Negotiate capabilities means it is purely related with the codec negotiation. <clears throat> and then we will define the roles of SIP proxy servers like we have uh, SIP proxy server redirect server, we have registrar server, we have normal proxy server. We will discuss about these servers in details. It, and then we will discuss about the authentication mechanism uh, we will show you like add more headers to support more services and features. 
USC and US behavior and what is the industry wide used stand. So let's discuss about the things in detail in session initiation protocol. As we can see in the signaling and deployment, SIP mainly supports five methods of establishing and terminating multimedia communications, which result in following capabilities. So the first user location, user availability, user capabilities, session setup, and the session management. So in the user location, as you can see that, what it's saying, it determines the location of targeted endpoints. So this is your first phone A, and this is your phone B, it will determine the location of this targeted endpoint as well. This is the capability of this. We will discuss about this in the next slide as well in detail. User availability, it will check the availability of targeted endpoints, whether this uh, is available or not. Capabilities, it is mainly related with your, related with your uh, session description protocol. It describes, it determines the media capabilities of targeted endpoints. So media capabilities like this phone A is using G711, this phone B is using G722 or 29 or any other protocol. It determines the capabilities and then they will negotiate it. Then session setup is it establish a session between originating and the targeted endpoints. It means it is creating the session between these two phone A and phone B. Session management, it manages the transfer and termination of call transfer. Like if phone B wants to transfer the call to phone C, it manages that as well. And it, if you want to terminate it, then you can terminate the calls as well. So these are the SIP capabilities, what we already discussed determines location it supports address resolution name mapping and call redirection like if uh, the phone b wants to redirect the call to phone c it will send a message of redirect the calls to the phone c determines media capabilities that is related with the sdp sdp means it contains your port number the rtp port number and whether the call is an audio call or a video call or it will send you the codec things as well like uh, what all are the codecs I'm supporting and then in response it will send you like what all are the codecs after negotiation. Determines availability it will check and returns a message indicate to why target is unavailable. So this is your phone A and this is your phone B and if phone A wants to reach out to phone B but this phone B is unavailable at that point of time. So if there is an invite from A to B then B will send a response that, okay, I am not available at this time. And it will tell you why it is not available, like whether it is busy somewhere, whether it is not reachable or anything. It will come in the response. Then establishes session. It means it also supports mid call changes, adding another endpoint and the codec changes. Adding another endpoint means if A wants to add uh, phone C on this call as well, then it can add as well. And if A wants to change the codec from G711 earlier it was using and if it wants to change it to G722, it can do that as well. And IP centric features, that means it can, it handles the transfer as well as well. If you wants to put phone B on hold or phone C on hold, it can put that as well. And it can handle the transfer as well. Like phone, uh, phone B wants to transfer the call, then phone B can transfer the call to phone D as well. So this SIP supports transfer as well as hold option. Then we have these things that is SIP clients, like what all are the clients uh, which are considering under the SIP. So we have IP phones, we have soft phone pieces, we have soft phones pieces that have phone capabilities installed. That is the first example we can say our Cisco IP, a Cisco Jabber, Cisco IP communicator, and uh, now we are using Microsoft Teams that is also a soft phone, Microsoft Skype for business as well. So there are so many soft phones which have phone capabilities. If any software has phone capabilities, that means that is a soft phone. From Cisco side, from Cisco point of view, we can say that Cisco, uh, Cisco Jabber is a soft phone, Cisco IP communicator is a soft phone, WebEx meeting, Cisco WebEx meeting is also a soft phone. And this Cisco SIP IP phones can initiate SIP request and response to those requests. And SIP gateways is also a client uh, that provides a call control. And then we have SIP conferencing stations also. Let's discuss about the SIP servers now. So we have these things that is proxy server, redirect server, and the registrar server. 
So proxy server, what proxy server will do? It receives the request and forwards on client's behalf. So this one is your A, this one is your phone B, and in between we can say this is our proxy server. So what this proxy server will do? Once it shows like A is sending an invite to the proxy server, what proxy server will do? As it is written, it receive request and forward. So it will receive request from A and forward it to phone B on behalf of A. So it receives the request and forwards on client's behalf. Client is A and it forwards it to client B. It is this proxy server is mainly used for the authentication, authorization and the routing. Routing we are doing authorization and authentication whether that is valid or not. Redirect server, it provides the client with the next hop information like what is our next hop so that the client directly contacts with the server. Then we have this registrar server. It receives the request from client for registration of their current location. So this A, it will tell uh, this registrar server will register like what's the location of phone A. And it is mostly co-located with uh, this one redirect and proxy servers. Then we have this SIP request response model like, uh, like we can say there's a request from requested to the responder that is the client and the server. So as soon as it sends the request, it should send something. The server should send a provisional message or an optional messages. Likewise, it is saying progressing message that contains one XX. Either it could be 100 trying, 180 ringing, anything. Any one XX messages comes under the provisional message or progressing message or an optional message. So once it's there, then it will send the acceptance messages like this one. Either it can send the acceptance message or it can send the redirection message or it can send the rejection message. Acceptance message, we can say that if it is accepting, that is 200 OK or 202 acceptable message. In the redirection, it will send in 3XX, that is it can be 301 or 302 uh, redirect to the other server. Rejection message, it can send, uh, it can be 401 unauthorized, 486 or 487 request terminated, these kind of messages as a rejection message. This is for the redirect, this is for the acceptable. We will discuss about all these messages as well, 2XX, 3XX, 4XX messages. So this is normal request response model. So now let's discuss about the basics call flow. So yeah, only one of these is sent, whether for acceptance, redirect, redirection, or a rejection. So this is our basic call flow. So if the user agent one is initiating the request, that means that user agent one is a client as we can see it just initiate the request so he just sent the invite message and then user agent two that is bob will send a hundred trying message that is a that is our provisional response which is one xx message so after this hundred trying it will send one eighty ringing message and after this 180 ring, what, what's the main purpose of this 180 ringing? It is just telling user agent one that I am ringing the user agent two phone. So it will play a local ring back on on user agent one side as well. So I hope you know, like if you are uh, making a call to someone, once it is ringing on their side, it will you will also getting a local ring back as well. That ring back is coming from your phone, not from the remote party's phone. That is particularly from your local phone only. So after this 180 ringing, you will get a 200 OK message that contains an SDP message as well. So we have three, we have two methods that is early offer and the delay offer. So we will discuss about that early offer, delay offer and early media as well after this one. So once 200 OK will be there, then your user agent to one, he will send, he will send a acknowledgement as well. So like if there are messages, if there are SDP messages in 200 OK, then it will negotiate it and will send it under the acknowledgement. After that, the RTP stream will establish and it depends, RTP stream established and it depends who is going to terminate the request, who is going to disconnect the call. If user agent two is going to disconnect the call, then there will be a message of buy from user agent two. Like in this case, user agent two wants to terminate, wants to disconnect, it will send the buy and then user agent one will send something like 200 OK message from his side like 200 okay so after getting 200 okay it means this call is being disconnected 
so this is our basic call flow of sip as we uh, as we know these are the main methods main messages that is invite 100 trying 180 ringing 200 okay and then there is an acknowledgement so this invite till 200 okay is one thing that is one transaction acknowledgement this is another transaction buy till 200 okay this is also a transaction so we will discuss about this uh, transaction dialogue and the session as well so let's discuss about the transaction uh, dialogue and sessions so what is transaction a transaction consists of a request any non-final response received and a final response that is 2xx345 or 6xx it is basically a complete request response means invite till 200 okay is a transaction so this is phone a this is phone b the first one is the invite message this is 100 trying 180 ringing and the 200 okay so if this is one transaction so after this 200 okay once there is an acknowledgement this is another transaction and after this once rtp stream is established and someone wants to terminate then it will send the buy message and then you get the response of 200 okay that means this is your third transaction so these are the three transactions like uh, invite till 200 okay as you can see invite till 200 okay is one transaction ACK itself is a transaction and buy and 200 okay is also a transaction then what is dialogue dialogue it's a series of transaction between two peers so these are the two peers peer a and peer b so these transaction combined we can call it as a dialogue series of transaction then we have this thing that is sessions session is just a media stream either it could be an audio or a video which is flowing between peers it is mainly consisting of rtp and possibly rtcp packets so if there is a media established between phone a and phone b then we can call it as a session if rtp stream did not establish like after 200 okay or even before 200 okay it just sent 487 request terminate then that is a transaction like series of transaction we can call dialogue as well but we cannot call it as a session because there is no rtp stream established so once there is an rtp stream established then only we can call it as a session and we need transactions and dialogues in order to create sessions so uh, this transaction dialogue and session is completed in our next lecture we will discuss about the sip methods and then we will discuss about the configuration on gateway as well like how we can configure our uh, gateway as a sip protocol and how we can configure the sip thing on the cucm as well so we cannot configure our cuc we cannot ever configure anything as a like a sip gateway there is nothing called sip gateway actually we just configure a sip trunk which is routing to the gateway and for the sip trunk we will create SIP profile and the SIP trunk security profile as well on the gate. So I hope you really like this video and enjoyed this video. So if you really like it, please like, share and subscribe it. And please press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.